K-I-L-R Killer game Gamer simmers and pilots, I am the killer gamer, and welcome to my tour around the world, featuring one of my other cats, Julia's. Oh, oh, he does not like. He likes to be held, and sometimes, okay. <laughs> You gonna go up there? All right. Uh, Julius. We named him Julius because he's orange. <laughs> he's a sweetie. All right. So, <clears throat> where are we, and what are we doing? Holding cats. I have cat. I have a. I have cats in my uh, my plane. You've pretty much, you've almost seen all the cats that that I have just on various videos. <clears throat> the only ones that we that I haven't shown you yet is Shadow or Shadow. You've seen Spice, um, and Ginger. Ginger is a this. She's like a Tribble. <laughs> she's big, and she's white and fluffy. And trying to pick her up, oh, it's not that she's heavy, she doesn't, oh, she's like, you want to hear like a hissy fitty kitty, oh man, she's, she's that. <clears throat> All right, this is where we're at, Bloomington Normal, and this is where we're going, University of Illinois. Um... Probably a little bit of a flight, but uh, we'll see what we can do as far as entertainment. All right, so I would say let's tune in to 110.0 for the, uh, the VOR. <clears throat> Why don't we do the... Uh, we'll try to land on runway... 18. I'll set that up. Meanwhile, we'll take we'll leave on the Bloomington radio at the course of one that's too close. We'll say just one two zero. That should be fine. Yeah, that give us some some room. All right. Time to get the radios. <laughs> Time to make the donuts. <clears throat> Forty miles, that's not bad. Now that is closer than uh can can khaki. Can khaki. Now I can't seem to can't Kanka key. I'm trying to remember how it was pronounced. <laughs> now no, I can't remember. Okay. <clears throat> we'll set this for 180. Probably should have gone the other way. I think they do have an ILS. One two zero on this one. One oh eight point two is Bloomington. All right. 
looks like we are all set um, and it looks and this is pretty much a good runway for us to be on we just need to turn around <coughs> go ahead and do that You remember me telling you I, I had downloaded some scenery for Bloomington. I'm supposed to enhance it, but I'm not sure what it enhanced because I'm not really seeing anything. And I don't even know if I installed it properly. I mean, is there any special install instructions? Because it was not in any type of README file. <coughs> Okay, take off flaps, full power, well that was not full power, that's full power. Okay. I had moved my air lawns. Up, flaps up. was pausing with the uh, <clears throat> I can't remember if it's always been doing that or if it's just recently up to 3,000 feet. I'm not so sure about the autopilot. It almost got, in, got us into trouble one time. Those are those. Okay, you remember when we were we were talking about the the rectangle? <coughs> I'm, I'm, did we put that on small or big? Let's see. Should be under four sim. Yeah, I got under the big rectangles. If we change it to small rectangles, let's see what it does. Nothing. <laughs> Hmm. 
Now I guess my question is, do you like it with the big rectangles? Or is that kind of distracting? I mean, it does give a little bit more to look at. Not that it's the most exciting thing to look at. <coughs> All right, well, while we are flying there, we uh, see if Champagne has got a ILS. Yes, it does. Runway 31. We would have to come around. We'd have to fly around the airport and land that way, and I don't know if I want to do that. It doesn't take long for that to drift. I had set the gyro compass and it was at 120 and then like within a couple of seconds it went to 121. That's a little unrealistic, I think. I don't think it would go that quickly. Well, we're on course. <laughs> well, I've got this book that we can read a couple of things on. I've been doing it on the other simulators too. I've got this book. It's about it's got like fascinating facts around the world. It is why do cowboys wear high heels? I haven't even gotten to that question yet. Okay. So, why do mosquito bites itch? Itching from mosquito bites is caused by an allergic reaction to the fluid the insects inject when they bite you. Once your skin reacts to the bite, you scratch it. But why doesn't that work for very long? The reason scratching stops an itch is because you are hurting yourself. Any itch is an irritation of the nerve endings close to the surface of the skin. Scratching, therefore, causes a minor pain, which overrides the itching. If, some, if scratching has removed an external cause of the itch, say dust or a loose thread, it won't return. If the cause is internal, like a mosquito bite, it will return until the irritant is absorbed by the body. When you swat that mosquito, you're killing a mother. Only females bite, and they do it to get blood to nourish their young. Male mosquitoes only consume plant nectar and water, and don't count on your dog to take a bite for you. Different species of mosquitoes feed on different animals. Why do we eat fish with lemon? <clears throat> it's got nothing to do with the taste. Serving lemon with fish is a 600 year old custom that arose from the belief that lemon juice acted very much like an acid. Thus, if someone swallowed a bone, a mouthful of lemon juice would help to dissolve it. <laughs> but wait, you say. Wouldn't someone have put a bone on a plate, tried this out, and seen that it didn't work? Perhaps they did, but the odd thing was inside the body it often did work, though not for the reason people thought. What happened was that sucking a lemon caused the, dinner, the diner's throat muscles to contort, 
freeing the bone and sending it on its way to the stomach. Incidentally, if you were eating a fish that was supposed to have been boned and you happened to find a bone, it was polite to say nothing of your discovery. That was the origin of the expression, make no mention of the bones, which was shortened to make no bones about it. <laughs> and some of the other ones that are in here. Why is Scotland Yard in London? Why did pirates wear earrings? Are bats blind? Is dry cleaning really dry? <laughs> Now, I don't know if I'll do that on Flight Simulator 4 or one of the other ones, but see, this is encouragement for you to <coughs> watch the other simulators because you never know what I'm going to be talking about. <coughs> okay, so I have been working on Flight Simulator 4 and getting this caught up in the tour come on go over there there we go <clears throat> so Flight Simulator 4 um, is not the only one I just recently managed to get this work through DOSBox and once I started uh, playing it and understanding it and seeing how close it is to the Amiga version I'm like okay we're adding this to the to the tour especially since um, you can add airports and stuff to it so it would be a shame if I did not uh, include this in the world tour but that's not the only one that we're going to be doing see another one that I haven't yet started is Flight Simulator for Windows 95. So we will get to this. Now there, there really isn't anything special about this version. I mean, it's it's considered version 6.0, but if you were to play it, it looks like a cross between Flight Simulator 5 and Flight Simulator 98. <laughs> because it still has the same control panel um, some of the textures are the same other parts of the textures look like from uh, Flight Simulator 98 and then it's got more airports in it not as much as Flight Simulator 98 I think but definitely more than 5.1 so It should be interesting. I really wasn't sure if I was going to get it. You know, I was just going to stick with Windows or <coughs> Flight Simulator 5.1 and, and Flight Simulator 98 and not really worry about this one. But you know, I just went ahead and decided to do it. See, Flight Simulator 98 is actually version 6.1. So it's just an enhancement of this is all it is. Although, to me, it seems like two completely different releases. You know, like Flight Simulator 2000 and 2002 and 2004 and FSX. <clears throat> they just seem like completely different releases, not a, well, this is a patch or, you know, like minor upgrade or something. So we need to find uh, some scenery and stuff to use on Flight Simulator 4. Um, I know Mallard had put out a Grand Canyon <coughs> uh, scenery pack. I'll see if I can get my hands on that one. And I don't know if they they put out anything else
It's 1.39 in the morning. So when we land, this is going to be one of those times where I'll be like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and take like a two, two hour, two and a half hour nap. Virtual, right? Not, not for real. Although I haven't been getting a lot of sleep lately. <clears throat> I don't know what it is. It's like I can't sleep the whole night. Um, and then I wind up being like tired halfway through the day. And then I take a nap and then like I'm awake. <clears throat> it's like I want to force myself to be awake. But when you're doing something and you're nodding off, I mean, that doesn't quite work out so well. But, yeah, so the whole purpose of the, you know, advancing the time, saying, you know, this little role play thing is so that way we can keep the daytime and nighttime relatively close with all the other simulators. They're not going to be exact. But I like to like for them to be generally the same. So, for example, I don't want us going to Champagne at, at night and on one of the other simulators we're doing it in the day. I want it all to be consistent. Got 22 miles to go. Now here's a question for you. And by the way, I don't ask I don't talk and ask the same things on every single video. So, you know, if if you if you enjoy hanging out with me and listening to me just chat and stuff, um then you're going to want to check out the other flight simulator videos too because I I do the same type of thing. But um the idea of this uh, tour, at least the direction that I was going to go, um, we're going to be going south just a tad and then west to the Mississippi, along the edge of Iowa, up to Wisconsin, and then back east again, where we'll come down um, south in Illinois. Um, next to, is it Lake, is that Lake Michigan? The one that's next, next to Chicago. So we'll be coming south that way again, and then we'll be heading across the Great Lake into Indiana. And we'll be going through Lake Erie, and, or, yeah, Hur Huron and Lake Erie. In that area <clears throat> so that's like scenery disc uh, 11 but it's after that that I'm curious this is going to take a few months before we get there so there's plenty of time but I'm curious what would you my original idea was to continue south a little bit from Ohio into Kentucky and then start heading west <clears throat> and I'm wondering should I maybe go east to go to go to New York and Maine and Vermont and stuff because that should be covered by scenery disc 12 the reason why I was thinking about going west was because the Commodore 64 does not have scenery disc 12 it was never released the Amiga has it um, flight simulator 4 has it and um, and also the older versions, Flight Simulator 1 and 2, um, it'll work on those. So those and the Commodore 64 are, are relatively close to the same. Um, so even if I couldn't go into that area on the Commodore 64, I would be able to do it on Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, 1 and 2. Uh, the problem is that I have not been able to get that to work. 
Um, I try to I try to get it work working in DOSBox and it just freezes. So I am still seeking a solution to that. Maybe I'll just look for an old PC, <laughs> like a really old eight PC XT. I don't know how I would get the graphics to to export though. I certainly don't want to be recording this with a video camera next to the video screen. I think that's champagne right up here. But um, another reason why I wanted to go west was to include Hawaii. Because um, we would be flying over the ocean and going to Hawaii. And then from there... I don't know if I would go from there to Japan. That'd be a long flight. Um, or go back to California, head up north, and along the edge of Canada into Alaska, and then over into Russia. Which the Canada and Alaska will not be covered on the early flight simulators. <clears throat> but we'll be able to get like custom uh, people that have made custom content will get that kind of coverage I think I'm beginning to see maybe something that someone did there's 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 something over here in the the city of Champaign <clears throat> I did uh, download something for Champagne, the Champagne area from flightsum.com, so maybe that's what that is. 16 miles to go. And by the way, I did try to get <coughs> Flight Simulator 2 working on PCM, the PC emulator. The Flight Simulator 2, you're supposed to boot off of the floppy. It's a bootable game. And I can do it with DOSBox. I can't do it with the PC emulator. It, it just doesn't work. <coughs> I wonder if that's the airport. There's a big white thing there, which makes me think it's a building. And there's something over here. I think that is Frasca. Oh, no, maybe not. I think it's the small rectangles <laughs> for the uh, the textures. The texture patterns. So that way you don't have this plain green on the screen. Oh, there's something yellow over here now.
I think I just saw this move. Yep. Okay, time to turn. Turn just a little bit here. <coughs> see, I wasn't sure. Uh, ah, there's the airport. Okay, I see it. See how close we can get to downtown over there. Now, if we were in the default scenery, we're on uh, scenery disc nine or in or otherwise USA East um, you know so we've I think there's like extra stuff in here but if we were just using the default uh, area for Flight Simulator 4 then this would be the bottom most part of the area you would have to get a scenery disc after that to be able to continue but we have scenery discs, so we're good. What is that yellow thing? Runway is like right here. We can't get to that uh, city fast enough to figure out what in the world those things are. Buildings, I'm sure. Alright, we're under 10 miles. Let's get our gear down and one thing of flaps. One thing's for sure, I have not been able to get a whole lot of speed lately. think that those are houses. <coughs> I tell you what, with the time that I'm spending on the Commodore 64 and like with this and Flight Simulator 98, by the time I replicate these flights in FSX and X-Plane, 
I'm just like, wow. <laughs> and FS9, for that matter. I think FS9 is still a great simulator. Um, I gave it the F-Scene overhaul, so it's got F-Scene 4X. Yeah, that looks like a house. These things definitely look like houses. Six miles. This will slow down some more. That airport's got the red and green markers on it for the runway. Not the one that we'll be landing on, though. Just make out the runway here. Almost like a plane out there when you got the red and the green lights. Like on the edge, it's like a wing. <laughs> like one light here, one light here. Oh, we got some weird texture showing up down there. Those things are just kind of disturbing to look at. Okay. We're off as far as the runway is concerned. I guess those could resemble like neighborhoods or something.
think we're close to the ground. It's hard to determine here. And the texture is like right underneath the runway. That just kind of like doesn't look right. those small rectangles disappear because the big rectangles <laughs> it covers the area all right it looks normal again <laughs> Take our taxiway and go on in. We've got a taxiway coming up here. I believe that's the Navistar building. There. So I don't think that was in the default scenery, at least I didn't remember it in the Commodore 64 or even the Amiga version. It wasn't until I started Scenery Disk 9 that it popped up. Okay. Not quite sure if... I don't really see it. It's hard to see any type of taxiways around here. Have a star, not have a star. Whoa. I was hitting the wrong button for the brakes. <laughs> that could have ended badly. All right. Well, we're here at Champagne Williers, uh, Champagne uh, University of University of uh, Champagne Williard, <laughs> University of Illinois Williard. That's it. All right. Well, thanks for joining me on this flight and hanging out with me. And I hope to see you on the next leg of our journey. Take care. Be safe in the skies. If you thought this flight was interesting, then you might want to check it out on these other flight simulators that you see on your screen. It's just a fun way to relive old memories and see how things changed over the years. Be sure to subscribe to be notified of any new videos, and I'll see you on the next flight.